Okay, so if you like saving money, well then you better like mathematics because math is the language of money. And what I have for you here is a basic math word problem that involves money. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. It is the following. What's a better deal? Two widgets for $75 with a $15 coupon or two $55 uh, widgets on sale for 35% off each. Okay, so in either deal, we're going to get two widgets. One is with the coupon, one is with the sale. And some of you might be saying, well, what is a widget? Uh, a widget is nothing more than a fictitious item. And we are compare the, uh, comparing the same widget in this particular problem. And let's go ahead and define um, as well, what is a better deal? Well, the better deal is the one that costs you uh, the least amount, right? It's the one that we're going to save the most money. So hopefully this is pretty obvious to all of you out there. And feel free to use a calculator to figure this out and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, we will calculate how much each deal costs. And then we'll make a great financial decision to save ourselves some money. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the better deal is. Well, the better deal, the one that's going to save you the most money, is the deal with the coupon. All right, well, hopefully all of you, uh, you know, got this right. And if you didn't get this right, no big deal, okay? But you definitely want to work on your math skills because uh, when it comes to making financial decisions, you got to have at least a minimum level of uh, skills in mathematics, okay? Uh, if there's any one reason... You want to learn some math. It uh, definitely has to do with you, you know, managing your money. But uh, again, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a financial expert, someone that's probably really should be on Wall Street because you figured this out. But uh, all jokes aside, good job. And uh, I would call this basic practical math or maybe like consumer math, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get into this prom. And uh, this prom is going to involve us uh, really calculating how much a deal uh, each deal cost, right? Uh, because that's the only way we're going to be able to compare uh, these deals. So we have two deals to consider. Uh, the first being two widgets uh, for 15, or so two widgets for $75 with a $15 coupon. So this is our first deal. Okay, we want to calculate this thing out. And then we want to go ahead and calculate this other uh, deal, two $55 widgets. In other words, uh, each widget normally costs $55, but they're on sale for 35% off each. So really, this problem is going to come down to calculating each deal and then comparing. All right, so uh, we definitely know that this is the correct answer, but let's suppose we uh, didn't know the answer. Well, we're going to have to do the math. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take on this first deal. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Two widgets for $75 with a $15 coupon. Let's go ahead and we'll call this deal one. And deal one is going to cost us $60, right? So two widgets for $75 with a $15 coupon. Well, how much, or $15 coupon, how much is it going to cost us? Well, $75 minus our coupon, we get to spend $60 for these two widgets. All right, now, is this a good deal or, you know, the one that we should take? Well, we won't know unless we uh, calculate the other deal. And that's what I'm going to do right now. But first, I'm going to show you this. And this is basically uh, my little kind of uh, quick commercial break, right? Uh, you know, listen, it's important for me to kind of garner as much support so I can really keep, you know, doing the best I can on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for many, many years. I love being on YouTube. I love teaching mathematics, but I need your support. And that comes in a form of you subscribing. It really does help my channel grow and uh, really helps me 
uh, reach my goal, which is to reach more people that are interested in math or need help in mathematics. So this really does help me out. And so I certainly would appreciate it if you subscribe. And if you're going to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. Now, I have had countless requests uh, through the years on people that are kind of want to revisit math. You know, people that uh, missed learning math maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, or people that just never were comfortable uh, with the way their math education went. Maybe they had a particular teacher or teachers or circumstances that just didn't sit well with them, and they often wondered, hey, could I have done better in math? Well, listen, I made this particular uh, math course for you, and this math course is called my Math Skills Rebuilder course, okay? And this is a great way to kind of get back into math. And I just want to tell you very uh, briefly, this is a new course, so I'm kind of highlighting it uh, right now because many of you have asked for something like this. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below. But basically, in this course, you can start from the very, very basics again, learn all that basic math arithmetic, and then just you're going to kind of from there move on to a ton of algebra. You're going to learn a lot of algebra in this course, and it's self-paced. There's no rush. You can just chip away at this, you know, as you want or where your interest is at. Uh, so uh, in this particular course, we go through basic math, algebra, geometry, and then we're going to get into some basic trigonometry and basic probability and statistics. But this is an excellent course to get back in math and to really um, increase your you know, math skills for a lot of different practical applications, especially like in probability and statistics. You know, it's just going to make your kind of critical thinking, your overall ability to analyze data much, much better. But anyways, if this course interests you, uh, you'll find a link to it in the description below. Thanks for listening. Now back to the problem. Okay, so here is deal two. We have two $55 widgets on sale for 35% each. Well, this is where people could get confused because we're dealing with percent. So what does this mean? Well, 35% uh, off, right? On sale for 35% 35 off uh, sale, right? So let's not confuse this. Right? So we're, most of you might be saying, okay, well, we have to figure out 35% um, uh, sale. What does that mean? Well, we have to take 35% of the cost of a widget. So 35% of 55, this is one widget. How do we find a percent of a number? Well, remember the way we find a percent of a number, percent, excuse me, of a number is to take that percent and divide it by 100, which is effectively uh, is the same thing. Let me write this a little bit better as moving the decimal point over two places to the left. Now, a lot of people will say, well, how do you convert a percent to a decimal? And automatically they'll say, oh, just move the decimal point over two places to the left. Yes, that is true, but that's just the consequence or uh, that's what happens when you divide by 100. So the technical answer is to go from percent to a decimal, uh, we um, divide by 100. And the effective result of that is to move the decimal point over two places to the left. So 35% or 35.0% is the decimal 0.35. Okay, so what we want to do is change our percent to a decimal and then multiply by the number. So 0.35 times 55 is 19.25, right? $19.25. Now, what is this? Is this how much we are going to pay uh, for this lovely widget? No, this is not how much we're going to pay. This is how much we're going to save. We get we save $19.25. So now we have to go back to the original price of that widget, which is $55, and take off our 35% discount, which of course is $19.25. So we get to pay $35.75. Now, uh, some of you might have recognized, well, instead of doing it this way, if it's 35% off, what we're really doing is just paying 65% of the price, right? So 100% minus 35 is 65%. So you could just uh, more uh, directly figure out the actual cost, which uh, by taking 0.65 of 55, it would have still gotten you to the same place, which is 35.75. But um, you got to be careful when you are um, calculating uh, discounts, okay? Remember, that like 35% off, this is not where you're paying. That's how much gets reduced off the original price. Okay, so this is how much one of these widgets cost on sale. Of course, we want two of these. So 35, uh, 75, that's our 35% discount uh, on, on one widget. We're gonna multiply that by two because we want two widgets and we end up here paying 71.50, which of course is more expensive 
than this first deal right here for $60. All right, so just basic financial math, you know, uh, uh, in school you might call this like consumer math, but if there is any one reason to uh, learn math, it's definitely for financial situations for sure. Okay, especially uh, in this day and age. Well, I mean, money has always uh, been important, but as you know, today, uh, now more than ever, well, I'll say it this way with inflation going on, high interest rates and whatnot, you need to be very tuned in to your uh, financial situations. And the best way to do that is to really increase your math skills. Make sure you have strong math skills. So you want to double check things, you don't want to just take anything you know, for face value, if you're like, well, I don't know if that makes sense. Well, have the math skills so you can double check your financial kind of situations. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.